What is going on everybody? I hope you guys are all having a great day today. I know I am. The Raptors just won the NBA championship last night. Still feels surreal and I'm sure if you're a Canadian like me you have to be ecstatic with that. But nonetheless, in today's video we're back with episode 5 of NHL Deal or No Deal. And this has quickly became the most popular series on my channel. You guys really seem to like it. I'm always getting comments when's the next Deal or No Deal. So I'm probably going to try to do it every week or maybe every other week. And you know, I don't want to overkill it, but I definitely do want to keep it coming at a steady consistent rate but in this one i'm doing five trades and then at the end of the video my buddy hatrick line i've collabed with him before you guys all know him go subscribe to his channel links will be down in the description he has five trades he's going to talk about after i'm done so without further ado let's jump right into this video Starting off the video with a trade from Master J, one I'm definitely interested in, and they say Detroit trades Anthony Mantha to the Edmonton Oilers in exchange for the 8th overall pick and Jesse Pugliarvi. Now, if I'm the general manager of the Red Wings, Steve Yarsman, and Ken Holland comes over and offers this trade, I think I'm going to accept it in a heartbeat. I honestly think this would be a little bit too much to give up for a guy like Anthony Mantha, and you know, I'm a Red Wings fan. I love Anthony Mantha. I think he has all the potential in the world to be a consistent 30-goal scorer in the NHL but he's yet to show that and I think this would be a pretty risky move but obviously Ken Holland knows Andy Mantha well from his time as the president and general manager of the Detroit Red Wings so I think this would be interesting definitely something that I don't see happening but you know I think Anthony Mantha would be a great fit alongside a guy like McDavid so if I'm the Red Wings and this trade is offered to me I'm gonna say deal but if it's the other way around I'm not quite sure you know what the Oilers would do but uh you know I like this deal for the Red Wings side getting that return but I'm not quite sure how I like it for the Edmonton Oilers. So for that reason, I'm going to say no deal, but I definitely like the idea of the trade. This next trade comes from Jaguar, who says Calgary acquires Phil Kessel and Pittsburgh sends the other way the RFA rights to Sam Bennett, prospect Oliver Kylington, and a 2020 first round pick. Now, I like this trade a lot for Calgary's side because they're probably going to be pretty active this summer, you know, trying to acquire a top six winger. It seems like that's something they've wanted to do. There's been rumors about them going after Jason Zucker, and you know, they wanted James Neal to be that guy, but quite frankly, in his first season, he was almost unplayable at times, so that didn't work out. And you know, going back the other way, getting a prospect like Oliver Kylington, you know, he was a second round pick back in 2015 hasn't really proven himself yet he had eight points in 38 nhl games this year so you know i'm not quite sure what his potential is in the nhl but then you're getting a guy like sam bennett who i think has now finally found his role in the nhl as kind of a third line scoring slash checking forward he can kill the penalty and he can still play you know power play minutes on your second line power play unit and i think playing with all the talented guys in pittsburgh he probably would be due for a breakout year but still i don't think that is quite enough for the pittsburgh penguins you know if you're giving away a guy who can definitely score 90 points still on a consistent basis in phil kessel so for this trade i think we're gonna have to say no deal this next trade comes from Linny 57 or Liney 57 however you want to say that, and they say Kreider plus Jimmy VC plus the 20th overall pick to Colorado for the 4th overall pick. Now this would be interesting because then that would leave the Rangers with the 2nd and the 4th overall pick, you know, just speeding up that rebuild even more, and it would give Colorado a lot more scoring depth with a guy like Chris Kreider who could be in their top 6, take some of the pressure off of the McKinnon and Ranton and Landeskog line, and then Jimmy VC who showed this past season that he's a very capable top nine forward and then you would still be getting you know a first round pick but I'm not quite sure about this one just yet because I don't know if Colorado really wants to part with that fourth overall pick because they're most likely going to get a fantastic player whether it's Bowen Byram whether it's Turcotte whether it's Pud Colson anyone like that I definitely think they're going to want to hold on to it so for this trade I'm going to have to say no. The next trade comes from Rhina Arnold who says Philadelphia receives Martin Kaut, AJ Greer, the 16th overall pick, Nikita Zadorov, a 2020 second and Colorado receives Sean Couturier and a 2019 sixth round pick and this is another trade involving Colorado which and I really think it would help the depth of this team and that is what I think they should focus on this summer because you know you have the top heavy guys you have the offensive firepower with players obviously like a Nathan McKinnon and players like a Ranton and Landeskog and stuff like that so getting a lot of depth would definitely go far for this team in my opinion this summer and Sean Couturier I think would be an amazing second line center you know in my opinion he could be a 
a solid first line center in the league but when he's your second line center I think your forward depth is definitely doing okay and you know go the other way you get a guy like Martin Kaut who's probably going to be a decent NHL player a top six forward you know if he does pan out you get the 16th overall pick you get Nikita Zadorov who's going to be in my opinion a pretty solid top four defenseman in the league and then you get a 2020 second round pick as well and you know this Philadelphia team they have a lot of really solid forwards and I definitely think giving up a guy like Shkutri to get all of these assets back would be a pretty decent move so I'm a big fan of this trade and I'm gonna actually say deal and now for the last trade for my part of the video comes from MooseHockey09 who says Nashville gets Connor Sherry, Vladimir Sabotka, and a 2023rd and Buffalo gets Kyle Turris plus a 2024th. Now Kyle Turris' name has been centered in a lot of trade talks over the past couple of weeks and the Buffalo Sabres have came out and said they're going to be looking to upgrade that scoring depth this summer and I think a guy like Kyle Turris as potentially a second or third line center behind Jack Eichel would be a fantastic fit there and you know you're giving up a guy like Connor Sherry who didn't really work out and then you know I don't really think that would be too big of a loss and it's kind of a shorter term move you know Connor Sherry is younger obviously than Kyle Turris is but it definitely would help them right now because they are trying to get back into the postseason and you know Nashville's getting Vladimir Sabodka who could probably crack their NHL lineup and a draft pick and then you're also getting a fourth for Buffalo so I honestly like this trade from both sides so this is another one that I'm actually going to say deal to. How's it going boys? Hattrick Liney here. Just before I get into this one, I just want to give a huge shout out to O Nyquist for having me back on. I really enjoyed doing the first collaboration with him, and I hope you guys enjoy this one today. Uh, if you guys wanted to check out my channel, it is Hattrick Line. And uh, with that said, let's get into the first trade here. So in this first one, we have the Jets trading Jacob Truba and Jack Roslevic to the New York Rangers for Chris Kreider, Brendan Smith, and the 20th overall pick. There are a lot of things I like about this trade. I like that the Jets would be getting a roster player and a draft pick back for Truba. But uh, I think there are more negatives to positives for this one, for the Jets at least, which make me think they wouldn't take it. Uh, the fact being that uh, Brendan Smith comes with a pretty hefty uh, salary cap for two more years. I believe it's just a shade under $4.5 And the Jets are in salary cap hell right now, so they can't really afford to take that on. Uh, also considering that they, uh, they have a lot of guys that can be their fourth and fifth and sixth defensemen. So they don't really need a guy like Brendan Smith on their team. And uh, Jack Roslevic, I know there was trade rumors surrounding him that he could get traded and that he had requested a trade, but uh, his agent actually came out and said that wasn't true. So Jack Roslevic, I love him as a Jets player. Uh, I think he's got a bright future here, especially when we lose some guys to free agency. I think he's going to be a third and second line guy possibly next year. Uh, for the Rangers, I'd have to say this one, but I don't think the Jets would take it, so I'm going to have to go ahead and say no deal. So this next trade we have is from Hattrick Kane, and he is suggesting that the Flyers trade and sign Jacob Truba to the Jets in exchange for Philly's number 11 pick this year. And this is a trade I really like for both sides. Jacob Truba, obviously, I think he's worth an 11th overall pick. He was an 8th overall back in 2012, and he just had his career year. He had 50 points. And for the Jets to get a 11th overall pick, that'll be a pretty solid player that they can, you know, trade in the future or grow him. You know, the Jets have a magnificent history of drafting around this position and being able to grow that talent so I even if the Jets decide to keep the player they drafted 11 it would be pretty good but uh, Jacob Truba I think is worth that 11th overall pick Philly obviously gets a heck of a defenseman that uh, you know there's been a lot of turmoil with his contract over the last couple of years it's been a couple bridge deals here and there so I think Jacob Truba is pretty much done in Winnipeg and if the Jets decide that they don't want a player back in his trade then I absolutely love this trade for both sides I would say this is a definite deal this next one we have up here is from Ferris Ibrahim. He suggests that Montreal trades Nick Suzuki, Andrew Shaw, and a second round pick to Philadelphia for Ghost and a six. Now this is a definitely an interesting one because uh, Gostas Bear, he's obviously a very up and down defenseman. He can be on a hot streak, he can be playing insane, or he can have a kind of slow year like he did this year. But uh, this is an interesting one because I don't know if Montreal would be willing to part with Nick Suzuki to give up a package for Shane Gostisbehere. Gostisbehere, obviously a hell of a defenseman, would fit very well in Montreal, I think, as an offensive defenseman, but I don't know if Montreal is willing to trade Nick Suzuki, but uh, if they were, for the for the better of the argument here, I think this is a package that is worth Shane Gostisbehere. I think Nick Suzuki is a top 10 NHL prospect in the league currently, and uh, Andrew Shaw, you know, he's one of those players that I think would fit pretty well in Philly. I don't know if there would be any salary retention. And a second round pick, if uh, Philadelphia was okay with this package, I think it makes sense for both sides. 
the one thing I might say about this one is that Philly already has a wealth of young uh, forwards. Uh, aside from obviously Drew and Voracek, they have guys like Patrick and Konechny. So this would definitely be, you know, a weird one, I think. I don't think this is a trade we'll see, but... Uh, for this one, I'll say this is a good deal. Up next, we have another Winnipeg trade. We have the Jets trading Jacob Truba to New Jersey for Damon Severson and Jesper Bratt. And I'll be 100% honest, I absolutely love this one for both sides. Uh, Truba, I think, is definitely an upgrade over Damon Severson. And if the Jets decided, you know, I think with the first one we saw with the 11th overall pick in Philly, that would be the ideal trade for both sides if they wanted to, if the Jets wanted to just get a draft pick out of Jacob Truba. But if they wanted to get a player back, then this is a great trade, I think, for both sides. Like I said, uh, New Jersey uh, upgrades Damon Severson for Jacob Truba at the cost of Jesper Bratt. And I really like Jesper Bratt. He came into the league super young and showed he could play with men for sure. But uh, if New Jersey was willing to give up Brat as a as the piece to upgrade uh, Severson to Truba, I think this is a good deal for both sides. I'll say this one is a deal. Wouldn't mind having Brat and Severson on the Jets, and I think Truba would be a good fit in New Jersey. So this next one is a woozy. It is from the Stanley Cup itself. I don't know why he has an Oiler logo. That's just a little bit interesting. But uh, the Stanley Cup is saying that the Oilers should receive Nikolai Ehlers in a trade that would send Jesse Puljujarvi and Benning to Winnipeg. Uh, the reasoning behind this, he says the Oilers get a top six winger for McDavid and Winnipeg sheds some cap and they get Pugliarvi who played with Line a in the juniors and Benning to fill the void there defense will have. Uh, this is definitely a very interesting trade. Uh, obviously the Jets would be trading Nikolai Ehlers. Nikolai Ehlers, this is a tough one for me because he's one of my more favorite players on the Jets. So... Uh, from that view, it's tough to even look at, but uh, I guess this one makes sense. I mean, the Jets will be trading a guy with a lot of salary cap, six million, so that they can free up some space for Kyle Connor and Patrick Laine. And uh, Edmonton would finally, you know, they'd be able to shed away uh, Jesse Puljujarvi, and he'd be able to find, you know, a new franchise, you know, somewhere. A fresh start, I think, is really what he's looking for. Uh, but this one, I'm going to go ahead and have to say no deal for the fact that the Jets drafted Ehlers. They gave him that big extension last summer. And he's a guy who can be a 30 goal, 30, 40 assist guy. Uh, he's shown that he can score. Obviously, he's had some struggles in the playoffs. And last year, he missed some time with an injury and didn't have a great season. But I don't think the Jets are sold on Ehlers being, you know, the way he played this year. I think Nikolai Ehlers is a tremendous player. I think he's a first line guy on most teams. Uh, his speed is crazy. And I just don't think the Jets would be willing to part ways with Nikolai Ehlers and take a chance on Jesse Pugliarvi. I think wherever he goes, though, I think it'll be a Dylan Strome situation where uh, whatever team gets him, they might just end up regretting the trade. I would love to have Line A and him together. I think it would be a great fit. But uh, I think this one is a no deal for me just from the Jets' perspective. I don't think Nikolai Ehlers is someone they want to give up in their... Uh, in their journey to shred some cap they have some other players that would make more sense uh, but uh, this one is a no deal for me so that is going to wrap up today's video i really hope you guys did enjoy and like i say in all these just because your comment wasn't featured don't be upset there's going to be many other opportunities to you know get your comment featured in these videos because i'm going to be doing these a lot this summer especially with no hockey and not too too much to talk about and also they're really fun to do and you guys enjoy them as well so make sure to go down and subscribe to hatrick lana his link will be in the description and with that being said i hope you guys all enjoyed today's video if you did please make sure to drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel for daily nhl content and I will see you guys all in the next video.